It sure is ironic that the French Dispatch is about a fantasy French version of the New Yorker magazine with an editor who does very little to edit his writers. And what do you know? Wes Anderson could have really used a good editor on this movie. Whew, where's the red pen? There is a lot that needs to be corrected here. This is Wes Anderson unleashed, like he's never been unleashed before. And it was a bad idea. As a result of him having no one to basically tell him no, it seems, the French dispatch is so overwritten and overstylized that many times throughout the course of the film, it is impossible to tell exactly what's going on. Like you have a vague idea, but that's it. The dialogue just almost seems to go in circles. And it's just so self-indulgent. It's really hard to follow. Also, Early on, I really, and I really like Wes Anderson, by the way. Just to give you an idea of what kind of Wes Anderson fan I am, I'd say my favorite films of his are The Grand Budapest Hotel and The Life Aquatic. Uh, I thought those were really fantastic movies. But early on in the film, there's this charming shot where we see a French waiter's long and absurd path up several stories to deliver breakfast. And it's a fun tableau. tableau. Uh, how fun with Wes Anderson movies you get to use words like tableau. Uh, and it just, it's a gag that, it's also a gag that slightly overstays its welcome. But that would be fine if this sort of thing was done sparingly throughout the film, which it is not. I mean, they have so much of this kind of thing that they significantly slow down the pace of the film and sometimes outright grind things to a halt. And it's really hard to get the, everything started back up again. There's another gag that's overused here, I think, which is frozen frames of a fight scene that are really just actors standing still and, you know, wire used to hold things and hover, you know, have them hovering in midair like they're being thrown. And, you know, I mean, the first time you're like, oh, that's cute, I guess, right? But you can see an actor blink or waver. They don't quite pull it off. And, you know, you're like, why, why don't you just give me a good fight scene, right? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, though, to see new actors. It's not all bad. It's pretty bad, though. It's a lot of fun to see new actors in Wes Anderson's hyper-stylized world, particularly Timothy Chalamet. If you're a Timothy Chalamet fan, sit through this. You're going to be rewarded. And Jeffrey Wright. Both Chalamet and Wright, instead of just going along with Wes Anderson's flow, like you know his usuals do, they fight back a little. They're like, no, I am going to establish a character. It's like their characters are the only ones that seem truly alive, trying to find their way in the absurd world that Wes Anderson has created, instead of just seeming like dolls, like extensions of the inanimate objects or the mise-en-scene. That's how I would say it. They stand out. Jeffrey Wright and Timothy Chalamet fight back and they stand out a little bit from the mise-en-scene instead of being swallowed by it. Uh, and they also manage to deliver absurd yet still understated and organic performances, whereas other actors just come across like Adrian Brody's choices are, I think, too much. Henry Winkler is also, it's nice to see him here too, but he doesn't really get anything to do, unfortunately. There's also a fake play at a point within the movie, which briefly features Ted Lasso's Tohib Jimo. He's been, and he's been acting very differently than he does the Sam on Ted Lasso. So I was so delighted to see him have such range. I wish his part had been bigger. But that little play was more interesting and moving than the rest of the whole movie. I was like, oh, I wish we'd just gotten to see this play. We also periodically, for one point, for an extended point in the film, we switched to Tintin style animation. They're sometimes wearing color. Uh, you know, we, we switch from black and white to color, which is striking, but it loses its it loses its it loses its strikingness the more that it's done and the more it's unexplained. Like things are just in there sometimes to be quirky. Like, uh, like there's just, they just do it because they're like pretty crazy, huh? And I mean, it reminded me a lot of that wonderful SNL sketch of a Wes Anderson slasher movie. Uh, but that's what it is. It's almost like Wes Anderson is in some ways parodying himself with this film. The film takes place in a fictional French city uh, called Ennui sur Blase. And Ennui, of course, is the French word for boredom. And it feels like Wes Anderson is bored, quite frankly, and just killing time here rather than you know, giving us a story with purpose. 
I also didn't love all the topless women in the movie. Ah, uh, hear me out on this. Come on. I think other women will know what I'm complaining about. In fact, Leah Sadu goes full frontal numerous times. And you know, um, Benicio del Toro, her scene partner, does not is not requested to do the same. Uh, even though they do, you know, they have they have slept together. You know, it's like uh, I mean, either they're both doing this or not. I mean, it's it's a Hollywood double standard that really bothers me. Uh, Timothy Chalamet is nude briefly, but you can't really say anything because he's he gets to cover up. And to ask several actresses to go topless when the film doesn't really call for it, and that's never been what Wes Anderson has really been about. I'm sure some of you will point to maybe a scene where at his, he's had a topless actress, but to me it came across here as really exploitive. Like I felt bad the actresses were asked to do this. Like Tilda Swinton, Tilda freaking Swinton. She creates a really interesting character here yet again. I was like, wow, Tilda Swinton, your bag of tricks is fantastic. I, I wish, you know, of course, Orlando is the film and her fame is playing different characters within a single film, but I'd love to see her play like, all the characters in a movie. I think she'd be phenomenal. But then why does she have to appear topless, even if it's just briefly and as a sight gag? I mean, I guess they kind of give it some meaning later on in the story, but I just felt it was not appropriate to ask her to do that. I know some of you will say, oh, well, the female body is art and it's beautiful to look at. And I've always heard people say this thing where the female body is beautiful and the male body is not. Ask anyone who's into the male body, it's nice to look at. So. I mean, it's not only do I feel that this nudity was unnecessary, but I felt there was a double standard at play here. So I really bothered me. All right, but hey, it's Wes Anderson in a French setting. And it's not, so it's not all bad. You know, it's like spending a lot of time looking at dioramas. You're like, that's a lot of dioramas. Whew. Uh, and so after I saw the film, I did go home and turn on some French classic music. So I guess the movie's got that going for it. The French Dispatch, by the way, is not a single story. It's not just one long story. It's actual sev actually several short stories. So what I would recommend is waiting to stream this and maybe watching one short story at a time and taking a break in between. Maybe that would make it, because together they just don't gel and then what, what, what is there really just runs all together. It just seems like a mess. So maybe this is something that is best, best consumed in short bite-sized pieces and maybe it'll, it would be, maybe it would stand up better that way. The French Dispatch is supposed to be Wes Anderson's Valentine to the New Yorker, but I suspect he only looks at the pictures because for a film about professional writers, it's extremely poorly written. Like, wow. So that's my review of the French Dispatch. It hits uh, some theaters, I believe, October 22nd and gets a wider release on the 29th. And then sometime soon it'll be on streaming, which is when I recommend that you catch it. Uh, I'm curious to see what hardcore Wes Anderson fans think. But if you're not like, oh, whatever Wes Anderson does, inject it into my veins, then you want to wait on this one. Uh, but kudos to Timothy Chalamet and uh, Jeffrey Wright for really standing out from the mise en scene. They popped, boy. They popped. All right, share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.